Hi guys, and welcome to my channel. Um, this is my first review in English, um, so uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to explain to you why I chose to do it in English, uh, because it, it may seem a bit strange for a French guy to record a video in English, but um, I did it for at least two reasons. The first reason is that uh, this figure has been reviewed many times already in French, and so uh, I just didn't want to, to do one more uh, in French. Uh, the second reason is that uh, I noticed that there are not so many uh, English-speaking videos uh, with reviews of myth clothes, um, so um, I just wanted to do it. There might be a third reason, uh, which is linked to that uh, figure in particular. Um, many of you uh, may have um, started to know the series Sincere thanks to the adaptation of uh, Netflix entitled The Knights of the Zodiac. And um, originally, it was not in Masami Kurumada's intention to, to do the uh, Asgard series, uh, from which that figure is derived. And uh, this was a chapter which was added uh, later on when uh, the the manga was adapted as an anime in the in the late 1980s 1990s. And um, as for the moment, uh, I, I don't really know if um, Netflix is going just to follow uh, the original series. Uh, I mean, the original manga uh, religiously. So uh, I don't really know if English-speaking people will, at, uh, at one moment or another, uh, be um, aware of that um, particular character, uh, whose name is Siegfried, and that's why um, it's going to help you just to know the character a little bit more, and maybe um, trigger uh, an interest in, in that particular chapter of the series. Um, which is uh, my, one of my personal favorites. Well, so without uh, further ado, we're going to just um, unseal the box. So this is um, totally new. Uh, I, I, I'm going to discover that figure uh, with you, and uh, I hope that we uh, will enjoy it together. Well, um, so um, we have something which is quite uh, traditional for EX version versions of uh, Mythclose, so we have the front of the box, which represents the character in armor, and uh, next to it, the, uh, let's say, the emblem of uh, the figure. So in, in uh, Siegfried's particular case, this is um, the, the double-headed dragon, uh, whose name is uh, Fafnir. Um, uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about the, the secret story later on during the mounting of the armor, but uh, for the moment you, you just have an overview of what uh, that emblem is. Um, just for the record, this is uh, official Bandai, as uh, you can see here on, on this logo, and uh, this is a European version. Well. Um, Next, uh, on one of the boxes side, you have just um, the representation of the emblem on uh, a totem. At the back of the box, you have, uh, let's say, some posing of the figure in attack, with some special effects, some light effects, and uh, also an overview of the different faces. Um, and uh, in the last side of the box, we have the, the figure in armor in another posing. In, uh, at the top of the box, there's the, the representation of the, uh, I think in English that's called Osa Major. So, Osa Major's constellation, which is composed, as you can see, of seven stars, and um, actually, um, Siegfried is one of uh, those stars. He is the Alpha star, so I guess this is that star. Siegfried is just a god warrior of Alpha, and that's that's how that's how they call um, 
uh, the Asgard saints. They are not uh, called saints, actually, but god warriors. God warriors. Right, so um, that's pretty much for uh, the packaging. Now we're going to unseal the box. So uh, I, I prepare that cutter. Um, as you can see, the box is totally sealed, so I'm gonna unseal it. Here you go. So this is uh, actually a review and an, un an unboxing, an unboxing at the, time, at the same time. There you go. Well, so let's put that box aside. So what what do we have here? So we have obviously the assembly instruction. Well, uh, I'm not going to unseal it because I'm quite experienced with uh, mist cloth mounting, so I guess this will not be necessary to me. Then, we've got the different blisters, which is the content of um, the box. So, um, three blisters. Uh, I'm, I don't really know. No, that's actually four blisters. So that's one, two, three, and four. Um, well, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take them one after the others. So uh, there is the main one. Uh, why the main one? Because obviously we've got the character in it and um, the different faces and the different hands. Um, this is quite original because usually in the main blisters there's of course the character but there are also other body parts, I mean uh, armor parts. But here this is an exception and actually it's the first time I've seen such uh, an organization in um, Mythclose's boxes. So, uh, let's put that one aside. Let's continue with the second blister. So, we have the main armor parts. And the uh, third one is just the object. I mean, this is some stand on which you're going to put the armor parts to um, build the emblem um, of uh, this god warrior. And um, I remind you that um, the emblem is Fafnir, the double-headed dragon. And finally, that blister is uh, just the cape of uh, this god warrior. Not all the god warriors have a cape, but uh, Siegfried has one, so it's present in the box, which is pretty good. Well, so that's more or less for the different blisters, so now um, I'm just going to unseal them and I will be back in a second. Welcome back, so uh, first we're going to focus on the character proper, uh, without the armor on. Um, well, so that's uh, a pretty nice figure, and uh, as you can see, um, this is the civilian version for the moment. Uh, although, although it's not totally civilian, as as you could see, the, the the hands are in red, the the neck is also in red, and which is uh, actually uh, quite original on Mythclos because usually those hands are in uh, the flesh color. So this means that if, for example, you want to display that figure in the civilian version, you can do it. Uh, if, for example, you want to put it, to put on some clothes uh, on it um, and so on, you can do it. But uh, with that particular one, uh, it, it it won't be uh, really possible uh, because of those uh, fists which are in red. Uh, so you will have to remove them and to replace them with uh, normal ones if you if you have some. Well, so uh, this being said, uh, let's have a look at um, the, the figure and uh, each of the, uh, the limbs. Well, um, the feet uh, are, they are 
they are stiff but uh, it's a bit loose so uh, we're gonna see after the mounting if uh, that cause any issue um, this is the case for the right side and, and, and less for the left side as for the knees this is stiff really no problem with that no problem also with the legs as for the arms as you can see i i just set uh, first posing which is that that one and uh, i realized that uh, the arms are stiff too it's it's very rigid no problem with that well so overall this is uh, a pretty sturdy figure uh, without any major issue so um, I, I think that everything will be okay with the mounting and the posing afterward well um, that part uh, is over so now we're going to have a look at the different uh, armor parts in detail and and then after that uh, it will be time for the mounting and uh, at the end the posing of the figure all right see you then I removed the blisters lid just to allow you to appreciate more the content of each blister. So let's start with the main one. Um, so as I told you earlier on, this is the, the blister containing the different faces. So we see that we've got four different faces. And um, uh, actually we've got two attacking faces. I mean, uh, traditionally this is the face. These are the faces with the open mouth. And um, one which which is smiling a little bit, and and one with the 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 teeth. There's also in this blister the different hands, and the hand protections. There are four of them, which is uh, quite nice because uh, uh, lately Bandai has uh, given only two of them. So if uh, you happen to lose one of them, then uh, you were in a mess. So uh, you were in trouble. Um, so uh, the, the possibility to have an extra one is uh, really nice and and then we've got uh, four um, pair of uh, hands with uh, tight fists and uh, then open uh, hands and the, the pointing finger uh, which can be used to um, display um, Siegfried attacking with the uh, his main attack, which is the Odin's uh, sword. Well, um, there's also different types of hair, as you can see in uh, the blister. Different types of hair, and that's pretty much for that blister. Well, let's move on to the second one. Well, in, in the second blister, we've got the main uh, armor parts, and um, the the color is uh, amazing. And I, actually, there are two uh, colors present. Uh, one, uh, which is the main one, is uh, the blue. This is a dark blue, and, uh, and, and it's really nice. And, and there's also uh, a dark purple on the shoulder protection here so here you can see the different parts well uh, during the mounting um, uh, I will have to check if there is uh, any defect on each part but for the moment, everything uh, seems to be nice. Right, and here you can see that uh, this is the, the belly part uh, on which uh, there is the Odin uh, sapphire. And um, those sapphires must be collected by the, bro the bronze saints to be able to get uh, Odin's sword. So that's for the second blister. 
In that third blister, the main part is the totem, the objects. So if you are not interested in the objects, then you could think that this is uh, of no interest, except for the fact that it contains also the two pieces which go on a secret armor. One is used for the helmet, and a second one is used used on his right shoulder. So uh, you can appreciate the detail of that dragon's head. It's really nice. Still the same blue color. So here you go. Well, this is the last blister, and uh, this is the one containing the cape. Well, as you can see, it's really nice. But I think that it's not totally faithful to the series, as the interior part of the cape must have been red in my memories. And here it's white. So, um, I guess the, the figure would not be perfect, but uh, I expect it to be really excellent. Well, I can't wait, so let's move on to the mounting. Alright guys, everything is now set for the mounting, so let's start it. So, as usual, we start with the feet. Here we go. Well, first part is the sty protection. Right. Of course, this is metal. It's very really beautiful. Let's mix between blue and purple. It, it, it fits nicely, no problem. Okay. The, the parts are a bit greasy. I mean, Bandai uses a form of grease uh, that they apply on each uh, metal part just to protect the part. So uh, when you mount, um, don't forget to remove that grease because else uh, it's going to take some dust and uh, and and, and, may, and that may damage the figure eventually. So, um, the knees... Well, it's pretty difficult to put... Alright, so it's done. Again, I need to remove that grease. So, here we go. To put the feet back, uh, you may use the table as a support and just push the leg, push the feet in, inside the leg. So the left one. Well, uh, during the mounting that may be the occasion for us to get to know uh, Siegfried a little bit more. Well, uh, Siegfried is um, a god warrior and actually he is the, the main god warrior. I mean, he's the most faithful uh, of them and uh, is the last obstacle for the Browns 
the Brown Saints before uh, fighting against the Asgard chapter boss, let's call her like that, who is Hilda, Polaris Hilda, that's her name. And uh, Siegfried is actually the last obstacle before they can fight her. And as I told you, is the most faithful of the good warriors. Well, um, that knee part is a bit tricky to put on the figure, but at the end of the day, it, it fits really well. Well, um, the mounting is progressing correctly. As you can see, the first uh, result, the bottom of the figure is really nice. How beautiful this is. Well, I'm really excited to see the result at the end. Well, so as I was telling you, um, Siegfried is the main god warrior and um, is also, um, surely is also the most, the most powerful of them. Um, has, uh, he is the, the heir of um, a generation of heroes um, and uh, the original uh, hero was called also Siegfried and um, Siegfried obtained um, immortality from um, the Fafnir dragon actually uh, as the legend says, uh, well, this is Nord Nordic mythology, so, and as the Nordic mythology says, he had to fight against uh, Fafnir and uh, he beat it, and as a consequence, he received Fafnir's blood on his body, and um, that made him invincible. Well, actually nearly invincible, because one part of his body was not covered in blood, and uh, that was his heart, and that became his weak point, and uh, that's how he was defeated later on. So in the Cynthia series, Obviously, uh, Masami Kurumada uh, took back that ID, and uh, that's how the, bro the Bronze Saints um, will eventually defeat him. Um, actually, his weak point was discovered by uh, Dragon Shiryu, because, um, as you may know, um, Shiryu's weak point is also his heart when he prepares his attack. Um, his heart is not covered by his hands. And, and so if somebody attacks him right at that moment, then um, for sure uh, Shiryu will be killed. And, and that practically happened during the Galactic War at the beginning of the series when Pegasus uh, hit his heart during their first fight. Well, that, that small uh, piece on the belt is really tricky to put. Uh, so I'm gonna stop the, I guess I'm gonna stop the video just uh, the time that I put that small piece on. Okay guys, I'm back. So um, that tiny piece here is really really tricky to put it's really really tricky to put 
So now um, let's continue the story. So um, he, he got almost invincible, except for one point, his heart. Uh, and that was because when he received uh, Fafnir's blood, the leaf um, just uh, went up on, um, on his heart and uh, he wasn't covered in blood uh, on his heart. Well, um, so he was uh, beaten by Seiya uh, in the series and uh, that allowed he, him to, to get another fight against uh, Polaris Hilda, who, as I told you, was um, the, the boss of the Hades chapter. Well, everything is in order. The belly protection fits very well. No problem with that. Well, um, as a piece of advice, uh, I advise you to uh, mount first the belt and then, uh, after putting that small pot, which is really tricky to put, then mount the belly protection. To do so, you just have to uh, lift that up and uh, put the belly protection and then put it down. If I advise you to do that in that order, this is because uh, that small pot, which is really tricky to put, um, might uh, do some damage on that part if it's already on um, so uh, you you really want it to be uh, put uh, first uh, before putting the belly protection on well um, so let's continue with that front part well to put it on there's a uh, set which is like a, a fork or something. You put it this way and then you just push slightly like that. You can hear a clip and here you go. Well, that's um, pretty nice. We, we can say that we are halfway um, to the end of the mountain now. All right, um, so um, now it's time for the chest protection. So here we go with the chest protection. Well, uh, I'm sorry, I, I've got some trouble with the autofocus mon mode today. Well, it's really, really nice. Up to that point, uh, I haven't seen any major defects on, on the parts. That one is uh, obviously one of the most important, because it, that's a big one. And I can't see any, any problem for the moment. Well, um, so let's put that on. It's very sturdy. Here you go. Nice. Okay. Well. Now we've got the helm's protections to put. So let's remove the feasts. Here you go. It fits nicely too. Well, um, I forgot to tell you that uh, this is metal. And this is metal too. So um, if we recap, uh, metal, 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 uh, the whole belt is in metal. Of course, the feet are in metal too. Uh, the chest protection is in metal. All those um, parts are in metal. The only plastic part for the moment is the belly protection, 
which is uh, always the case on uh, uh, myth cloth figures. Well, um, again, I'm gonna remove the grease. It's very greasy. So um, just uh, plan to have a piece of cloth to remove it. That's for one. Well, um, this is something I wanted to tell you also. The, the arms protections are different, as you could see. This, um, this is um, the left side here and the right side here. So, as you can see, it's really different. So just don't mess up with the body parts. There you go. Right, no problem at all with the left side. Some tidying up. All right. Well, now the time has come to put on the hands. And uh, here I chose that pointing finger because uh, the first posing that I'm going to do is uh, simply uh, Siegfried's attack, the Odin's word attack. So I need that one. Uh, hand protection on. No problem at all. It fit, it fits nicely too. And the second hand is just a tight fist because he's in attack. So I guess he's gonna have at least one fist tight. One. So, to put the hands, uh, this is my technique. I use the elbow as a form of support, and then I put the hand on. Just like that. Here we go. As you can see, it's in place. No problem. So same thing for the left side. The wrists are really rigid too, which is really nice because this is not often the case. And when it's loose, even with that technique, the just putting on the fists is a nightmare. Well, um, uh, I didn't have any trouble to put them on, so this is really nice. Here we go. Look at how handsome he is. That's that's just great. I'm I'm really happy with that figure up to that point. Well, um there is just uh, two more. Oh, there are just two more things to do right right now. We've got the the shoulders to put on, and I'm I'm quite pleased with that because the shoulders are in metal too, and uh, this hasn't been the case lately uh, with Bandai products because obviously uh, metal is heavier than plastic and, and so for shoulders protections as we angle them um, in different positions it might be better to have lighter parts so uh, Bandai lately has chosen to put um, shoulders in plastic for uh, their figures but uh, for that one they uh, came back to metal and, and personally I prefer metal parts. I think they are more, let's say, 
um, durable and um, it's um, more difficult to damage them. Well, I'm going to remove that grease again. It's, it's really, really greasy and um, I, I can't recall uh, a figure with so, so many grease. So much grease, sorry. Well, um, I need the, the double head, uh, so I'm gonna have a break. Okay, I'm back. Well, so um, there are two possibilities for the helmet. One is um, to use the overall helmet. I mean, it's a helmet with uh, a protection also for the mouth here, right there. And one is without that protection. It just depends on the display that you want to have. Well, um, I haven't taken my decision yet, so I guess I'm gonna put the, the shoulders on and I will decide later. But um, I, I think I'm gonna use the, the overall helmet. Well, um, that, that shoulder is really nice. Look at that. Look at the parts. How great this is. It's just wonderful. So, um, let's put that on. Oh, uh, I'm just forgetting. There is uh, one piece here, one part here to put on his shoulder first. So, let's wait. Here you go. So this is the tiny part I was talking about. Yep. Okay. You can hear that small click, which tells you that the part is well placed. Well, um, uh, I'm going to study it and I'll be back in a second. All right, guys, um, I studied it. So um, I had to remove Fafnir's head and, and then it's easier because you can push on that part just to prevent it from turni turning when you try to fix the shoulder part protection. Here you go. Well, that might be the only difficulty that I have with that figure, with the mounting. But here, here, here is the result. So let's put on Fafnir's head. Here you go. Wow. Look at this. Look at this. Isn't it great? All right, second shoulder. And we will be done. The question is, will I put on the cape or not? Here we go. Well, that's pretty challenging. But the result is here. Right. How nice he is. Look at this. The colors are really, really wonderful. So, as you can see, you can move those parts, which will facilitate the pausing. Wow, 
Well, um, so now is the time to decide on the the helmet. So um, I guess that um, I'm gonna put the overall part. Right. Um, just before that, uh, as I told you, I think I won't put on the cape. Um, I like Siegfried as a very strong, good warrior. I mean, it's very manly, and, and uh, I think that the the cape is not just in agreement with his uh, character. So I think I will not put it on. Or at least not now. So in case you don't put on the cape, you've got that part which is fixed at the back of the figure. Just to finish it in a beautiful manner. And this is also tricky to put on. Okay, so here we go. As you can see, um, you, you will have to tilt it a little bit upward to be able to put that part in place. Okay. Well, now is the time for the helmet part. So to put on the helmet, you've got to remove the hair entirely. There you go. Um, then inside, well, there, there's that ponytail, let's say, let's say that, not ponytail, but it's a tail that you put right there. Inside the, the helmet, there's a strand of hair to put, I guess. So you just put it on the figure, I guess like that. Well, I, I told you that I wasn't going to use the assembly instruction. So uh, let's say that dismounting is a little bit with the feeling. But how to put that on? That's a question. Well, you can't open it. So I guess you will have to put the, the face after putting the helmet on. This is the way I see it. Yes, it seems it seems to be the case. Um, I didn't study it, but no. Let's put this trend up here. There you go. Right, as you could see, it was a pretty tricky, tricky part to put on, but here is the result. Well, 
I guess the the mounting is over. Just let's take some time to admire that pretty figure. Look at it. Well. Definitely one of uh, my most beautiful. Okay, guys, so um, that was for Secrets Mounting. As you could see, it, it was uh, quite tricky from time to time, but uh, obviously, all the parts fits really well. Some tricky parts are the helmet, and um, we had also some difficulties with the shoulders, in particular that one. But overall, the mounting was not so difficult. Alright guys, we are nearing the end of this review, and uh, for the time being, that will be my final pose with that figure. 
uh, I really enjoyed uh, manipulating it. Uh, it, it. It was really uh, nice and uh, the posings are very easy to find and it, it's really inspiring. Um, I just wanted to conclude saying the different qualities of that figure. Uh, obviously, the, the colors are wonderful and the, the figure has a lot uh, of uh, charismatic uh, qualities. Um, of course, there is uh, an added value to that EX version compared to the classic version. And, and this is more or less uh, with what I wanted to conclude. It's just a small comparison between that version and this version, the classic version. As, as you can see, the, the, the contrast is, is telling and uh, the, the EX version is, uh, is far over um, the classic version and um, that would be more or less my conclusion. Well, so that review is officially over. I, I hope that you took as much pleasure to watch it as I had to do it. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, meeting you on my channel again. Till then, goodbye.